So this is elk country. Big and high. We came to find elk. We did, too. It wasn't always easy, but it was worth it. Came along to sketch what happened. And here's how it went. American Elk, monarch of the glen, lord of the wilderness, king of the red deer tribe. Once, elk roamed over most of the United States and southern Canada. But now they live only in the high mountain country of the west. Places like the Laramie and Medicine Bow Range, the Bitterroot, Sawtooth, and Salmon River Mountains. And here, too, in the mountain meadows and timber above the Snake River Valley. Now, if someone asked me where to find elk, I'd say, go up, young man, go up. At this height, it takes a mountain of them just to survive. And the elk are higher still where Indian summer can turn to instant winter when a storm moves in. But we came prepared for anything. Our kitchen and sleeping tents were pitched in a wooded draw by a stream. Our camp was miles from where we hunted. The sound of our voices and cutting wood had spooked any elk that may have been around. In a few hours, our pack train had unfolded into a comfortable camp. All the conveniences of home. Plus a few new wrinkles that would have made the old timers gawk. I thought he might have had to stop sketching when the sun went down. But with his battery pack and fluorescent light, daytime comes anytime. What a convenience in a mountain camp. Portable power for the hundred little things that need doing after dark. Our snug mountain retreat came complete with wood-burning stove. Up here, appetites come early and last all day. Old habits died hard, too. Like shaving. And washing became a test of courage. Others just laughed and scratched. That snow melt water is about 35 degrees. Makes cheeks look like strawberry jam. After scouting the draws and meadows where the elk were, we got down to business. This 338 Magnum rifle should get the job done. With a 250 grain bullet, it's effective up to 300 yards or more, depending on where the hunter puts them. Now we're in for more climbing. The horses ease the load, and they'll carry the elk back, if we're lucky. It takes a sharp eye and a hunter's instinct to find elk. And a lot of waiting. Suddenly, it looked like our patience had paid off. Elk! moving down in the draw. Well, oh, just western deer. We'd have taken them, but the stock might have run off our real quarry, elk. Once more, science came to our aid. The real thing, elk spotted for sure. They were moving out fast. 
faster than we could get into position for a shot. We had missed our chance. The trip down was disappointing and a little bit dangerous. A loose shale and rock underfoot spells trouble for men and animals. One slip can end in a long slide, with plenty of bruises, and even a broken bone is a bad part of the bargain. And to top it all, no elk today. It's a good thing we brought extra pancake mix along. But for hungry hunters, flapjacks are a poor substitute for elk steaks. Anyway, we knew elk were around. This helped raise spirits. A hunter from another camp had scored in a nice five-pointer. What a beauty. He said it had come by his stand going like 60, and he took him on a 90-yard running shot. Could have been the one we saw. Well, maybe tomorrow. Looked like a good time to play Rip Van Winkle. But my rambunctious friends had other ideas for me. There was no way out. My hammock had become a cocoon. Later, we found that our icy stream of melted snow had its good points even though the trout weren't taking any flies. No wonder the fish weren't biting. A whale had scared them off. Sometimes hunting elk is just plain hard work. There's wood to be cut, grub cooked, and the traditional woman's work, washing dishes. But the fun followed. Nothing can top a warm fire, good friends, and talk of the day's hunt. Nothing is more pleasant than gathering around a fire and maybe even spinning in a few yarns. Memories like this last through the long western winters. talk of hunting elk made me wonder how it had been when the Indians hunted here. And what a hunt it must have been. A bull elk can stand as high as a horse and weigh a thousand pounds. It took great skill and patience for the Indian to make a kill. Carefully tracking, stopping behind every rise and inching forward to within bow range. Might be on the trail for a day or more and no guarantee of success as we found out. Next morning, we were out early, determined to get our elk. Some of the hunters had gone ahead to drive the elk back toward us. We had hunters on the top and both sides of a ridge, waiting. Elk, you're coming this way. Even when they're running, elk blend with the brush. But here it comes, over, down, then back up. Big Bull stopped for just a second. It was enough. 20, 30, 40 yards and down he went. We hurried across the draw to claim our prize. 600 pounds of elk, a fine specimen. The tape is carefully cut away so the head and rack can be mounted as a trophy. Tonight there'll be a hunter's feast with thick stakes all around. The end of a hunt is a little sad when you know you have to leave all this. But the mountains will be here next year when it's time to hunt elk again. Mm -hmm.